The World Health Organization has just announced that five more potential Ebola vaccines are ready for testing. The organization says clinical trials could start in Africa in December. Assistant Director General Marie Paul Kini said that she hopes that, quote, a few hundred thousand doses of Ebola vaccine will be available by the end of the first half of 2015. But she emphasized that her statement was a hope, not a plan. The first reported case of Ebola in New York has put the city on edge. But are their fears justified? Let's bring in Dr. Devi Nampia Parampil, an assistant professor at New York University School of Medicine, for some insight into this unsettling development. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. So uh, we know that uh, Dr. Craig was feeling sluggish when he used uh, uh, the subway system. He went bowling. Uh, authorities are saying that he was not infectious at this time, but were the people around him safe? Well, so in terms of feeling sluggish, it's hard to interpret because sometimes people just feel fatigued. But the time that his fever started was actually just yesterday morning. And so he didn't come into contact with people after he called uh, called the authorities to help him at that point. Before that point, before he had a fever, I think the risk is minimal because remember, fever is typically the first sign of an Ebola infection. And what you're worried about is how much virus is actually in your blood or your bodily fluids. So if he didn't have any symptoms, that amount would yeah. be low. Well, what about should the people be worried who were with him on a plane? He came to New York via Brussels. He took a, a long flight. He was ex, uh, exposed to a lot of people. Should these people be worried from different countries in the world? No, I don't think they should be worried. I mean, if we even look back at Thomas Eric Duncan, you know, he traveled in a similar fashion to the U.S., but nobody that he came into contact with on the plane actually developed Ebola. Even his close family that stayed with him, you know, here in the U.S., they did not develop any symptoms. So I think that the people are safe who traveled with uh, Dr. Spencer. Did Dr. Spencer do everything right when he came back? Well, you know, I mean, the question is, why did he use the subway? Why did he go to these public places? I mean, he was already concerned enough to actually check his temperature twice a day, right? So he was doing some monitoring. I think the problem is a lot of these things are left up to people's own judgment. You know, we should really be telling people who are coming from West Africa what they need to do and maybe set up some type of quarantine strike team or something to facilitate things, you know, to give them guidance if they have questions, to get them food and other supplies so they don't actually leave their apartment or their home to try to get those things. You know, we need to be more proactive in terms of managing this. Now, we know that uh, three people with close contact with him are under quarantine. Uh, is it enough to uh, hold them under quarantine for 21 days? What is your opinion or do they need longer? Well, I think the 21 days makes a lot of sense. I mean, we get that number from studies from previous Ebola outbreaks. I mean, the controversy is that the World Health Organization now is suggesting maybe 42 days. But that number comes from a different study. It's basically a study where they look to see if anybody could have potentially developed Ebola after 21 days, and then they created a statistical model. Now, the thing is, we're not necessarily interested in statistics or models, and we have to know exactly, you know, whether anybody developed any of these symptoms after 21 days. So. At this time, we can't be sure of that. So I think we should stick with the stricter thing. And we've already seen that people, when you put them in quarantine, they don't, even reaching 21 days is difficult. If we make it 42 days, we'll make it much less likely that people might actually comply with this. So complicated. Dr. Devi Nampia Parampil, Assistant Professor at New York University School of Medicine. Thank you very much for your insight. Thank you.